up the road in Charlotte, the Carolina Panthers offense is starting to take shape down at OTAs. They've installed red zone and two-minute packages this week. And compared to the Matt Rule era, the offense we're going to see this fall is going to look unrecognizable. When you put it side by side versus what we've seen the last three years, it will be unrecognizable. It'll be a lot like when you're a parent and you send your kid off to college and he has a buzz cut, a polo shirt on, tucked into some khaki pants. And then when they come home from Christmas break, they have longer hair than they've ever had before. They've grown some weird facial hair and have some, shall we say, interesting fashion choices. It's a lot like that, except in this case, it's a good thing for the Carolina Panthers. This is a new era of Panthers football. Let's start with the personnel perspective. In terms of just sheer personnel in the most obvious way, it's going to look completely different. How many things will remain the same? Rather than break down all the things that are different, what's going to remain the same from what we saw even last year? There's only one thing I can come up with. The offensive line. That's the one constant. You bring back those starters, and they perform pretty well. That's your one constant on the offensive side of the ball. But everywhere else, quarterback. You have a rookie number one overall pick that you traded up for. You brought in Andy Dalton. Wide receiver, no more DJ Moore. Say hello to Adam Thielen and DJ Chark. And more involvement for LaVisca Chenault, we would imagine. No more Deontay Foreman in the backfield. Miles Sanders come on down to replace 33. And philosophically, it's going to be a mesh of Sean McVay's philosophies with. Frank Reich, Doug Peterson, some sort of system like what we've seen in Philadelphia and Jacksonville under Peterson and with Frank Reich and in Indianapolis, that's what the offense is going to be. And there is some overlap there. Here was Frank Reich describing how those two systems mesh. I think we're starting to know that already. Um, there was a lot of care, you know, in our kind of melding of systems, you know, I, I, if I were arbitrarily putting a number on it, maybe... 30 or 40 percent of it was similar, maybe a little bit higher. And then um, but just getting the language that we wanted to use. Some of it, we brought the new language. Some of it, we kept the old language. Um, and then in the passing game, you know, kind of same deal. So um, it's been exciting. You expect a lot of creativity. You should expect a lot of open space. Creativity with an offensive minded staff. The Panthers haven't had an offensive minded head coach in their history before Frank Reich. The offense, here's how you're going to notice the differences, though. There are two key ways you can notice the differences. Big things that stand out. This is, number one, this is going to be an offense that's built around the quarterback. It's going to be built around Bryce Young. That didn't happen under Matt Rule. Mostly because they never had the air quote franchise guy. They had a bunch of mercenaries. Teddy Bridgewater for a year, Sam Darnold for a year, Baker Mayfield for a year. So they didn't build around him. Instead, they built an offense, it seemed like, around Christian McCaffrey. Unique talent, your highest paid offensive player. They built things around him. And when Christian McCaffrey was traded and Matt Rule was fired, Steve Wilkes still went all in on running back. Both Steve Wilkes and our guy, Ben McAdoo, going all in with the big and heavy package. That's true. Well played. Deontay Foreman running over people, ground and pound. A lot like what we saw with Ron Rivera before Matt Rule, Steve Wilkes coming from that staff. This staff that we're looking at now under Frank Reich, it was put together to elevate quarterback play. That's why you have, you pay extra for one of these consultants that some teams don't have. You pay more to bring in Jim Caldwell's expertise and have a passing game coordinator, Parks Frazier who Frank Reich's lauded about. And you have Reich, who's played the position and coached quarterbacks and has been an offensive coordinator as well when he wasn't a head coach. And Thomas Brown, who comes from that Sean McVay tree. And Josh, Mc and Josh McCown, who played so long in the league and has a ton of knowledge too. This offense is going to be built around the quarterback. And the second thing you're going to notice is Frank Reich's not going to neglect the tight end position. Matt Rule did. 
Matt Rule didn't see a lot of use for the tight end. So expect Hayden Hurst to be the most productive Panthers tight end since Greg Olson. That's not saying a lot because under Matt Rule, a tight end did not catch more than 21 passes. Crazy that's the case. Like Hayden Hurst's worst season, he had more than 30. Last year, he had close to 60 catches. Greg Olson, when he's healthy, he's catching over 50 balls every year. Yeah, so expect more from the tight end, but don't just take it from me. How about take it from Hayden Hurst out at OTAs yesterday? It's very tight end friendly. Uh, when you're in the red zone, kind of it's very tight end centric. I think everything kind of goes to that, especially when you have a young quarterback. Um, so you get the ball out quick, the guys that are kind of in your first side of vision. So it's exciting to be in those progressions and in those reads. So, again, compared to Matt Rule, the era that we saw that was terrible, those three years, the Panthers' offense that we see this season is going to be unrecognizable in a very good way. 